Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. This is Data Engineer One, and today we're going to be talking about runners. If you're new to the channel, this channel is set up to help data engineers, data scientists, and data enthusiasts get better at writing data pipelines. In this series, Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro, well, it says what it does on the can. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about runners. So what is a runner? Well, the runners are not the people outside. These are the executors of the Ketro code. So Ketro, as we already know, we have these nodes, we have these catalog entries, and then we have our pipelines which string them together. But how does Ketro actually execute the code that's in those nodes and that's in those data sets? The way that it does it is it uses these runners. Uh, and so Ketro comes with two specific runners. It comes with one runner, which is a sequential runner, where it will actually go through and run all of your nodes in serial, sequentially, and then the other, which is where it will run your nodes in parallel. We're gonna take a look at both of these today and then discuss a little bit about uh, the reasons why you would need to change some of these behaviors or, or make your own runner class and a little bit of an introduction on how you could possibly do that. Okay, um, so uh, really quickly, um, by way of understanding like how these runners uh, actually just figure out what code you need to go through. The way that Kedro breaks up your pipeline is once you submit the pipeline that you want to run, it will go through that entire pipeline and it will actually construct a dependency graph. So it's these, this directed acyclic graph or DAG DAG, which will show that like, okay, this is the root node and these are all the nodes that are uh, dependent on that node, yada, yada. This is actually like, for example, the background right behind me. This is effectively the dependency graph of your pipeline. Um, and this is actually really like super duper convenient because you don't necessarily need to have an extra piece of software, something like uh, Airflow, uh, in order to execute your actual DAG. Kedra will just execute it for you uh, automatically uh, with built-in capability. So this is really, really great. Okay, so in today's episode, we're not gonna go too much into the terminal, but instead we're gonna be using PyCharm. And so let me just pull up PyCharm here really quickly. Okay, so you should be able to see PyCharm here. And this is the code for a sequential runner. And so this is actually located inside of uh, Kedro dot runner and then dot sequential runner. And then this is the sequential runner. So right now we're actually looking directly inside of the Kedro code base here. So the, 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 the path for this file is right here. Okay, so this sequential runner um, will take a pipeline and take a catalog and it will run through your pipeline, executing each of the nodes, and as well as using the catalog in order to execute the nodes. Uh, and so what's interesting here is that the runners are the ones that are responsible for creating your default data sets. Uh, so this is important because if you've noticed from our previous videos, whenever we actually create a pipeline, there's a lot of inputs and outputs that don't have specific catalog entries. And so why is that, right? If you notice, I've never gone through and explicitly written out every single catalog entry. Of course, that would take too much time, completely unnecessary activity. And that's because the runners will create a default data set for you. In the case of the sequential runner, the default data set that it creates is the in-memory data set. And so with this data set, what it does is it just keeps your memory, your, your data in memory. Uh, so when you are saving, for example, from like a um, from a node going into a data set entry inside of your catalog, um, it will then use this in memory data set and save it in memory. This is in the default case where it doesn't find an entry in your catalog.yaml. Um, this is also really useful because sometimes you don't want to have a data set in your catalog.yaml entry for example, when you're working with PySpark. In the case of PySpark, you want to keep that PySpark data frame in memory in order to ensure that at the very end, it can do its lazy evaluation and so that you, you save a lot on the actual IO. And so this is exactly the reason why Spark 
uh, is is more powerful or was reported to be, you know, like became more popular than Hadoop MapReduce, which was always doing its stuff um, on disk and with disk. Okay. So the other thing that we have access to here uh, is the parallel runner. And so the parallel runner works in the same way as a sequential runner. It goes through and it takes your nodes uh, and it'll step through that dependency graph. But the difference with the parallel runner is that not only does it step through your dependency graph, but it does it with this process pool. So it'll actually run your nodes in parallel. This is really cool uh, because you might have a lot of processes that need to, you know, that aren't necessarily dependent on each other. Um, but, and so as a result, they can run in parallel. And so if you use the sequential runner, it may run slower than uh, if you would run them in, in like in that parallel um, parallel manner. What's special though here is that the default data set, if you'll take a notice, uh, it uses this shared memory data set. And so the shared memory data set ensures that once data gets written out from a node into an output, that uh, data itself will be available to the other parallel executors in your pipeline. And so that way, to, so you don't have to necessarily go through like a single pipeline with you know, one executor, you can share that memory between them. So that's really, really important here. Okay. Uh, and so I think we've kind of hinted at it a little bit. So what are some of the reasons why we want to actually override some of the behavior of these runners, right? So the first one, of course, is if you want to have a custom data set. So this is right here, this create default data set. This, is only, this only happens on the runner level. Um, if you need to have uh, some other capability changes um, for across your pipeline, it's also really great to put it inside of the runner. Uh, so there might be like a, some behavior that you can't necessarily use a decorator for. You can do that inside of your runner uh, executor um, inside of the sequential runner. Um, so right here, for example, this sequential runner uses this particular function called run node, where it will take a node, the specific node, as well as the catalog in order to run that node. And if we take a look at this function itself, um, it's very simple. Basically, all it does is it goes through, pulls out all of the catalog data from the input for the catalog, for, from the inputs of that node. Right, so it goes through, takes that list of inputs, right? And if you remember from our, if you remember from the actual nodes themselves, we have a pipeline where we have the inputs list, and we go through each of those input lists here, and then load all the data for those inputs, and then we insert those inputs as a list into the run function of the node. Then once we get the output, we just save it to the output as appropriate, uh, and then if that uh, if that actual output doesn't exist we're going to be using the default data set as the output. So that's the way that the sequential runner works. Um, the, the parallel runner has a, a little bit more uh, complica complexity that's involved with it, uh, but basically it still does a, this exact same thing where you have a future, you wait for the result, the future gets its, gets its information from the same kind of run node function right here. And it actually is the same exact function. Um, it just has a little bit of synchronization management and um, uh, asynchronous management. Okay, so where are these runners actually instated? Uh, well, if you remember, whenever we do a Kedro run function, I'm sorry, whenever we do a Kedro run command line call, this actually by default is calling our sequential runner. Now, this is a runner intro pipeline. It just uses the basic iris data set. So how do you get access to the parallel runner? Well, if you want to get access to the parallel runner, you can use Kedro run dash dash parallel. And this will automatically load the parallel runner and run your data set uh, and uh, data pipeline in parallel. Which means that if you want to modify the actual runners that are used in your pipeline, uh, you actually have to take a look at the Kedro Kai. So let's go ahead and look inside of the Kedro Kai here. And then we can see if we search for runner or if we search for parallel, we'll find that parallel option um, here as a click option. And so this was the parallel arg help. Uh, and it is passed into this run function inside of the Kedro Kai, 
which will then load that runner class that you specified. And, and again, by default, it's the parallel runner. I'm sorry, by default, it's the sequential runner right here. Otherwise, it will be the parallel runner um, as the class that it loads. And then finally, it passes that instance of a new instance of that class into the context.run function as a runner, which means that if you want to actually create your own custom runner, you do have to modify either the Kedro CLI or you have to modify the project context itself. Uh, this is a little bit unfortunate, but it's a, it's a rare case, rare enough that you don't have to do it so often here. Um, so either you modify it in the Kedro CLI or you were to modify it uh, in a bigger way in the product context. But I do recommend uh, calling the run function or the run method here with um, a new instance of the class is actually much more straightforward and less ambiguous. Okay, well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you very much for joining me. If you guys like this content, I would really appreciate if you button that like and sub that scribe and ring that ding if you want to know when we're pipelining. And then next time, we'll show you guys some more fun stuff about Kedro and data pipelines. Okay, take care, everyone. I hope you have a good one. Cheers.